Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. <laughs> I expect an iGlue product to come out of them, and at some point that'll look like an igloo, but it's, you know. So now, Michael, what are you sitting in? A beer drinking machine. An iBot. An it iBot? It doesn't drink beer on its own. No, it doesn't. But Although, what? in the state of Washington, I'm a pedestrian, so. <laughs> You're a pedestrian, but you're obviously kind of using something that seems to be sitting on two wheels. How's this working exactly? Um, well, your, your uh, uh, camera might just be really drunk. It could very well be. Uh, but if not, then yeah, it's designed to, it's got gyroscopes and stabilizers to be able to stay up on two wheels. So is this considered, it's not considered a wheelchair, or is it? It is a wheelchair. But I've never seen anything like this before. Well, there's only about 250 in the entire world. Wow. How'd you get so lucky as to have an iBot? Well, I mean, principally, I think working for Microsoft, they just have some really kick-ass healthcare. So they uh, they actually denied it on first at first, but then they accepted it on first appeal. Okay, so now give me the backstory on this particular, I guess you could say, mobility device. In fact, let me try it again. Mobility device, because apparently I, I've been drinking one uh, glass of interview juice. Uh, okay. Too many tonight. Mobility device. Yes, a mobility device. So, uh, give us the backstory. Uh, Who made? Well, I mean, it's it's it does a lot of things. It's um, it has a four wheel mode that can handle rough terrain. Um, I don't ever imagine I'll hit for the jungle specifically, but if I were there, I wouldn't be too afraid to you know, start cutting loose and doing stuff. Sure. Um, it has this mode, which will handle being at eye level with people. Okay. And it uh, just makes it much easier to do stuff. It has a stair climbing mode, which is occasionally useful, not so much in Seattle, but some cities. I mean, I guess it makes sense. It works. Uh, it just makes life easier. So, this device makes life easier because. Because all the typical things that block people from normal human interaction kind of go away with it. All right. And who created it? Uh, Dean Kamen is the inventor. So the guy who created the Segway? Yes. In fact, the Segway was actually something that came later. It took seven years to get the FDA to approve this because the FDA is not really big on creativity in the assistive mobile device space. But every time he'd demo it, all the geeks would be, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, the, the, the Segway came out of that saying, I think we can make a little money while we're waiting for these people to, you know, approve it and stuff. Although the Segway, I'm not a big fan of the Segway. It's not very safe. Um, and this is this is completely safe. This is much safer. Oh my God! See, I'll, I'll give you my example. The Segway trusts the person who's in it, even if they're a complete idiot. It trusts them <laughs> to know what's best. Right. And so, for example, let's say you hypothetically wanted to look out over a cliff because you want that to be a simple thing to do. Looking out over a cliff. Over a cliff. Right. Because you're in your Segway and you're looking over a cliff. The Segway will helpfully say, ah, he wants to go in that direction and will in fact go over the cliff. Isn't that how the uh, how guy the who then bought, yeah, the, who company, bought the company died. The company died right. Which is proof that this is not a safe device because it trusts humans and humans are not really to be trusted. You need safeguards to defend people against themselves. So there are safeguards in this iBot. Oh, yes. This, its primary, its, its uh, prime directive, if you will, is to stay under my center of gravity, no matter what. No matter what kind of insane, crazy I'm doing, pardon my French, it's, okay. uh, its job is to stay under me at all costs. So for example, if I lean way forward, it's gonna move to stay under me. All right. If I have three people sitting in my lap, leaned out in all kinds of weird directions, it's gotta stay under all of us. And no matter what weird things you throw at it, it's gotta do it. If it ever feels it can't, it drops down to four wheels immediately. So then, this there's only 250 of them right now. Right. Uh, who services them if they're not being actively manufactured? Well, I mean, or... it, the, uh, the spinoff of Johnson & Johnson that was doing it in technology is still around until 2013 when it goes out of warranty. Uh -oh. They're figuring out what the plan is for service after that. I mean, basically, they have, in fact, the same tech who's done service on this thing is the guy who services my Dell laptop. So wow. they, they obviously just work with, you know... Technicians. People, technicians right. who have the service manuals for stuff and know how to fix stuff. And how long have you been in the iBot? I've been in the iBot since, let's see, I guess August, or no, September of 2011. Okay. So coming up on two years. Does it feel like a, as close as... Or, a, I'm sorry, 
It's November of 2009. Okay, now that would be, yeah, now a couple two, years. I, right. yeah, two years is what I had in my brain. Does it feel like a pretty close extension of your body? Like, as you said, you lean forward, it lean, it kind of moves with you. Is yeah, it pretty it, it natural does now. fluid? Okay. It does now. The, the initial, Wasn't it first? Well, it starts with a five and a half hour training period. Oh, okay. Followed by a half hour assessment test. All right. And it's a pass fail test, which I always thought was easier, but really, it's great because everything you can't do, it turns off that feature. Everything you can't do, it turns off. Exactly. So it's basically custom built or learns its user. Yes. And I passed all the tests, but if I hadn't, and I, I kind of fixed it for them, I had the check made out to me but endorsed over to them that I didn't hand them until after. I'm sorry. I, I didn't endorse it. I handed it to them unendorsed, but they I said I wouldn't endorse it if they turned something off. And so we had this kind of running gag about... One way or another, you're going to give me my, my chair. But, right. Uh, but I passed all the tests. So, so this, awesome. it'll take stairs. Yep. Uh, and this is, you said this is the, a mode where, which allows you to basically see, uh, like, well, I'm, I stand 5'5", five, five, and we see each other eye to eye. Yeah. Uh, this I, is, if I didn't slouch, I'd be six feet tall right now, but I have kind of a slouch, so I'm like... Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate because, you know, someone stands but definitely not six all kinds feet tall. Of, I'll, I'll tell you, so we've long discussed, and I've actually had a chance to experimentally prove it, the ideal height of a man... Aha, uh -huh, this is good. Between you know, Women always say, yeah, right, but after they hear it, they go, that's impressive. Is between two and six inches taller than the woman that he's with when she's wearing her favorite heels. And uh, there's a reason for that. Because See, now they're all saying, yeah. Now, the reason for that is because maybe you're such an amazing guy that your their socks roll up and down just for you to be around. But probably you're not cool enough they're willing to gut half their shoe closet just to be around you. So... You know, them being able to be comfortable, wear the shoes they like, and be out with you in public is a good thing. I mean, this never works against you. Have you uh, met in person any other iBot owners? I have. Um, there is one who I've seen a few times, uh, like on a bus, and I saw him at Sam the other day. I actually saw him at a hemp fest or two because it's kind of fun to hang out there. And sure. Have people think that they're really high when they're yeah. The guy what, what happens? At, what happens with the joystick at hemp fest then? Oh, nothing does. I mean, really, you, you get a minor contact high from just being around, you know, people who are clearly smoking, but, I mean, it's a fairly tame event. It works. <laughs> so is that the primary way of, of, of driving, is specifically that... Uh, oh, that, that's the only way. The only uh, way. The okay. leaning is just to keep the balance thing. It's not okay. like a segue where every place you lean is, oh, you want to go that way, I'm going to go there, that direction. You know, off the cliff or wherever you're going. So do you think you could effectively then get along without an iBot? I mean, you could... But would uh, could you find a better replacement if they decide to not? I oh, guess, support uh, it anymore? there is no better replacement. But I've already I'm already on schedule to pimp this thing somewhat fiercely once it goes out of warranty. Interesting. Um, all kinds of enhancements I have planned for the day that the warranty ends. So you're gonna hack your iBot? Yes. Now, would you and have you ever uh, like? I guess describe this as a wheelchair because I mean we have a, well, a mental con is. we have a, but we have a mental like a construct of what that is and this is just so plainly well, not. But I mean I can bring it all the way down like that and have it be like a really wheelchair. And you're doing it while holding your rear. That's just that's a uh, that's talent and not spilling anything. I can't even do that without wheels. That's right. See, I can done this and be like a regular wheelchair, and that's fine. So then, how quick uh, can you? then raise yourself. Well, it, it raises that kind of speed. Now, if there's an emergency, like say if somebody jams, runs into me at high speed, because right. I didn't realize I was there, which has happened, um, then it goes down very fast. But obviously, when it's not some emergency situation, it's a very slow process. And you get to relax all the way through. Oh, that's wild. Will it uh, rec yes. re recline was the question. Yes. No, I have a tendency to lean it all the way forward, so I'm sitting like that, but but I can actually lean it back five degrees, four or five degrees. Now, this is just as safe, but I've had every single person I've asked said this looks less safe. It looks like it's about to fall over. This is literally just as safe for it. So what's your uh, top speed on that? Depends on the mode you're in. The top speed when I'm like this, all the way extended, is 1.7 miles an hour. The what if you just want to cruise? The, the top speed of this, like really like this, is three and a half, which is you know, regular walking, maybe sure. faster. Now, if I go down to rough and ready mode, it's like five. If I go all the way down to my regular wheelchair mode, it's like seven miles an hour. Okay. So you know, seven's decent. Although you know, anybody who's running cannot run it. That's true. So. Uh, 
Um, seventh is not a normal speed. I mean, it's faster than a human would walk, but slower than a human can run. So, so why did this never take off? I mean, if there's only two fifty, I can't well, imagine. It's it's the it's the price, which a is what would exact. be. Oh, so the, the sticker price was twenty six thousand one hundred. Okay, which is the it's actually the sticker price of a Nissan Maxima that I bought twelve years ago. Although this did much better, the Maxima was a lemon. <laughs> this, did, uh, this has worked out much better for me. But no, but but the problem is, um, and I'll call it a healthcare problem, sort of. But it's actually not. It's more of an insurance problem. It's 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 all geared toward, and this is Medicare on down. Um, and, and actually, the letter that got this accepted is will give the hint of this. They didn't care that when I was in India, I couldn't use a scooter because the curbs were five inches. They didn't care about how much it made work easier. They cared about the stuff I could do around the house and the fact that I could reach the, the shelves and the cupboards and stuff. They cared about basically people that just stay at home in their wheelchairs, like good little handicapped people who don't be in front of the public. You make us um, well, I mean, but this one, this doesn't make people uncomfortable in the same way. Although you can actually tell the people are uncomfortable because they still come up to you. Whereas a lot in a regular wheelchair, some about half the population won't look at you or talk to you because they're afraid they'll catch wheelchair disease or, or they're just afraid they don't know what to say. Now in this, that half of the people still exists, but they do come up and say things, but they apologize. I'm sorry, but I have to tell you, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But the I'm sorry is because... They feel like they shouldn't be staring at you, but it's similar to guys who stare at a woman's cleavage. You know, I'm sorry, I'm not trying not to do that, but... I don't know, if, if I was apologizing in that way, it'd probably be like, look, I, I don't want to make it sound like this is awesome that you have to use it, but it's awesome that... Oh. So it pivots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it pivots, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so great. It reminds, there's, a, there's a character on Private Practice that has that. One of these chairs? Uh -huh. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's like, that's what made me, because I've never seen one in real life before. I just see it on that show, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is really real. So This is really real. Michael, they can find you on Twitter. Oh, yeah, my Twitter is Mishkat. M-I-C-H-K-A-P. M-I-C-H-K-A-P. Yes. Well, thank you for giving us the iBot tour. My pleasure.